Welcome to this episode of Ink It Up with Jessica TV. Today I'm going to show you how to make this birthday card with a fun flower on it and also the center of this flower I did a little embossing on to make it pop out and add even more interest. So I'm going to show you how to do that. For this card we're going to start with a piece of four and a quarter inch by 11 inch cardstock. And the reason that I cut it this way was so that when you're making the front of the card you can wrap the ribbon around the inside and that way it goes all the way around the card and it makes this easier to make. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and fold it in half and give it a nice crease with the bone folder. If you want to score it instead, you would score it at five and a half inches. I have a piece of designer series paper from the Confetti Celebration pack and I'm going to use some snail adhesive to put that on my white card front. And the color of the polka dotted paper that I'm using is the new Tangelo Twist. So I'm going to use that for stamping as well. So I'm just going to tape this across. This piece is one and a half inches by four and a quarter inches so it fits all the way across the card front. We'll go ahead and do some of our stamping now. I'm going to start with this flower. This is from the stamp set Flower Patch. And it's a photopolymer stamp set, so it's totally clear. You can see through. I just have another piece of Whisper White cardstock that I'm going to stamp on. And we'll use Real Red ink for this. Actually, no. We're going to use the Tangelo Twist for the background first. So I'm going to go ahead and ink that up. And just make sure that it gets all over. Sometimes the ink doesn't want to st stick to these clear stamps. You can use an eraser to rub over it and it will take the ink better. Okay, go ahead and stamp that down. I didn't get a great image, but I'm going to stamp over this with real red ink, so I think it's going to be okay. It's also going to dry lighter, as you can see. So next I am going to go to real red. And I'm going to stamp another stamp from that same stamp set right over top. And this doesn't line up perfectly, but it kind of lines up. So don't get real particular about which direction it's going. Again, you can see that this is going to dry a lot lighter. I'm also going to, while I have that red ink out, stamp a center. And I'm going to stamp that next to it because I'm going to cut that out so it pops up. Okay, finally with the real red I'm going to stamp my greeting on my card. And I have a happy birthday stamp. This is from the End Many More stamp set. Lots of great greetings in that. I'm going to use my stamp -a jig because I'm very particular about stamping things straight. And so I like to use my stamp -a jig It has two pieces, this plastic part, put it right in the corner of the T. I'm going to ink up my stamp, put my stamp in the corner, stamp on the plastic sheet. Then I'm going to line this up right on my card front, put it exactly where I want it. And you don't want to, you're not trying to line up the plastic sheet. It doesn't matter where the plastic sheet is. You want to line up your stamped image right where you want it. And then put the plastic... Um, T-bar back. Move that out of the way and then stamp with your stamp in the corner and it'll be right where you want it. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my magnetic platform and put, I have a clear cutting pad on top. Now my clear cutting pad is getting a little bit warped when that happens, the magnetic platform does not work as well. So until I get a new clear cutting pad, what I've been doing to make sure that my framelits stay in place is using a little washi tape. So I'm going to use my Flower Fair framelits. And this will match that and then this for the little piece. So you want the ridged side to be down 
and then we're just going to line that up. It might take a little bit of maneuvering. Just keep turning it until it lines up the way that you want it to be. Okay, once you have that where you want it, I'm going to use just a little bit of washi tape on both sides to hold that into place. Then we'll line this one up. This one is a little bit trickier, I think. And once you have it where you want it, again, we'll put a little strip of washi tape on it to hold it in place. Sometimes the washi tape is too sticky and I don't want it to peel up my paper here, so I'll just put it on my shirt to pick up a little lint, and then it won't be quite as sticky. It'll still hold it in place, but it won't be quite as sticky. So we'll just go ahead and put another clear cutting pad on top of this and run it through the Big Shot to cut those out. Now that those pieces are cut, I'm just going to take the washi tape off and pop them out. And then we'll work on assembling our card. I have a piece of real red. This is the quarter inch cotton ribbon. It's a lot lighter than I thought it was gonna be. Um, so it's kind of fun to work with and it doesn't add a lot of bulk to your card. So I'm just gonna wrap it around the inside and I wanna cover this seam here. So I'm just going to tie my knot here. I always flip this piece over and it seems to lay flat and nice that way. And then slowly pull it so that you get a nice knot. You can play with that as much as you want and also once you get your flower on you can decide if you want it more to the left or to the right. Okay, so I'll say that that's about right where I want it. Otherwise it does move easily if you just hold on to the outer edges and kind of just push it to one side. I'm going to put some Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of here. And this is just going to pop it up off the card a little bit. And then just, just move the flower around until it gets to the spot where you want it. I'm going to put it right there. And I always put my whole card together before I cut my ribbon. Um, I cut the ribbon at the end just to make sure that everything else looks good so that if I want to move it, I can. So then for this last piece, you can put it on just like this if you'd like. I wanted to add just a little bit of sparkle and interest to it. So I took my Versamark pad and I actually just kind of smushed it into there. And then the next thing I did was take a strip of Whisper White paper that I just had laying around. You could also um, hold it with tweezers or a clothespin or something, but I just had this sitting here so I grabbed it. And then I'm just going to tape that to the flower so that I can hold it and not keep my fingers when I'm embossing. So then once that has Versamark on it, the Versamark is going to grab the embossing powder. This is iridescent ice. So I'm just going to dip that in there and make sure it's all covered. And then it's very scientific. I just flick that extra powder off of there. 
make sure that it's covering my flower, but I don't really want it on this extra piece here. So I'll kind of wipe that off. And then we'll go ahead and heat that until it turns shiny and all the powder melts. So you'll just turn on your heat gun and point it right at the piece that you're embossing and you can see it's starting to turn clear and shiny. That's just the embossing powder melting. Okay, and once we're done with that, we can take it off this extra piece, and I'll put a dimensional on the back of that. And now we know we're having fun because we're covered in glitter. And I'll just plop that right in the center of the flower. Now we'll take my craft and paper scissors. I have a pair that has ribbon on it. This is only for cutting ribbon so they stay sharp. And I'll just cut the ends off of my ribbon to make a nice little bow. And there you have a fun card. So you can see that as this flower dries too it's going to look more like this. It, it does take a little bit longer for these new style Stampin' Up! ink pads to get to the color that they're going to finally be. So I hope that you enjoyed that birthday card and that you will try one of the techniques you learned today. Thanks for watching.